Here's a question for you, Brian Lass. Since I'm taking this program over anyway, I'll just start here. Yeah. Who? Who? Yeah. Who? <laughs> You're gonna yell at me? Yeah. Who? Smith's, Smith's Furniture. That's who. This, there was a furniture store in Louisville for years and years and years. Their their logo, their mascot was an owl, and they would show on the end of their commercial the owl would go who who Smith's Furniture. That's who. Who in wrestling and how many have been a success being junior? There have been some, but there have also been some that the name junior was the kiss of death. Black Jack Mulligan Jr. Well, I wouldn't say that, that? Was the, that wasn't the kiss of death. He recovered from that. Well, he were, well, okay. It, it, it was a lousy gimmick. Do you Br remember? Bruno San Martino Jr. was the kiss of death. Yes. Do you remember what Eddie Gilbert's first wrestling name was? Tommy Gilbert Jr. Tommy Gilbert Jr. Because his name legitimately was Thomas Edward Gilbert. But, you know, it, 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 especially in the home territory. Um, Bob Orton Jr. was a success. Bob Orton Jr. was a success. I want to ask, can I ask you an Eddie Gilbert question? Okay, so you, it's because you have no answers for mine that I put you on the I can spot. keep going. Dory Funk Jr. There's one that worked. Well, there you go. That worked. My Eddie Gilbert question was, famously, the Eddie Gilbert fan club, TNT Power, run by Terry Justice. Yes. You know, before Eddie was in the business, he had a fan club because Terry Justice loved him. Yeah. And they would say, Lou Thez was a member and this person was a member. Was everyone at WFIA willing and able to join? Or were they like, you better join the Eddie Gilbert <laughs> fan club right now, Lou Fez. Like, what happened? Well, no, you you actually, you there's a third possibility, and that's the one that was real and you didn't cross it. Terry Justice gave Lou Fez and this guy and that guy honorary memberships in the fan club ah i did not think of that now that's not to say that luther's was like well let me take this membership and wipe my ass with it where's my bulletin hello he, 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 i'm you know, waiting for my spring bulletin yeah he didn't hound terry about the bulletins <laughs> but no but uh, uh, tommy gilbert uh looked up to luther well eddie did too but tommy gilbert respected thez and tommy had had a chance to work with Thez uh, a number of times when when Thez worked in uh, 73, 74, 75 for Jarrett in the, in the Memphis territory. And, you know, so when Eddie was starting to train with Tommy and starting to, before he even broke in, you know, he obviously respects Lou Thez. So they would speak well of, of Thez and guys like that, some of the people, and, and Terry Justice then turned around and at the I'm trying to remember. Probably 78. Uh, that was 78. Where was... Not Thez still. was actually at... No, Thez was actually at the convention in 1980 in Atlanta because he refereed on the Omni card that weekend. But it, um, Danny Hodge was at the uh, convention in 1979 when we were in Memphis at the WFI convention. He came over and and did a booth. He was... Retired at that point, but it wasn't that far from Oklahoma. Um, when you say he did a booth, was he selling he, his cooking ware or was he doing yes, something else? He was. You know, okay. It was the cookbook. It was. I have a picture of Danny Hodge posed next to his booth at the WFIA convention where he was selling his brand new cookbook. And uh, but anyway, but yeah. So Terry Justice, and that's why it was T and T Power, Tommy and Tommy, Tommy Gilbert Senior, Tommy Gilbert Junior. But quietly that morphed real real quickly into eddie gilbert and that was that was better now terry justice probably put out more newsletters in a shorter period of time than anyone in history right i would have to think so because he he did it for the love of the game if you subscribe to it he he loved you for it but if not he sent them out for free and they were you know he must have been lived a mile from a, a copy of uh, a printing place because they were just really well done. And the, it was all clippings, newspaper ads and stories from all the different newspapers across the country about the local wrestling territories. And he tried to put them all together in one fell swoop. And so it was great reference material, but yeah, there were, 
Like just three three un- issues a week at times. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh yeah. And special issues. He did he did the Eddie Gilbert uh, Tommy and Eddie Gilbert fan club, but he also did Encyclopedia a, Wrestling is a pretty cool yeah, thing. Regular wrestling bullet, and then he did the encyclopedia where he'd go back and compile older stuff, and it was just it was crazy. If you you can he probably would have been if he hadn't got killed in that car wreck, a drunk driver ran into him. He would have been all over newspapers.com and all the, because he actually had to get shit through the mail or go to libraries and, and copy shit. You know, that was the only way to get that stuff back then. Now you can do research online. He would have had bulletins the size of the New York City phone book. Well, back to famous wrestling juniors. Do they make phone books anymore? No, I'm kidding. Um, and to- there was a Tojo Yamamoto Jr. Of course, absolutely no relation, but some outlaw guy in Tennessee. That was, I think, the worst case of uh, usage of Jr. I can ever think of. Vince McMahon Jr. Now, of course, he's a case like Rey Mysterio Jr., where they were a junior, and then all of a sudden they weren't a junior. Well, he's technically not a junior because he's the son of the elder Vince McMahon, but he has a different middle name which is why that he is always chafed at being called junior it's a technicality that no one ever thought of until he started bringing it up well and and also it's even calling him junior is better than what they used to when his father was still alive and all the people who knew his dad even after his father passed away they called him Vinny. hey where's Vinny? Vinny. gary capetta still calls him that there you go and 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 especially now the people who at one time did because that was what they called him now they enjoy calling him that because they know he doesn't like it and you know his dad would call him that the best is like in 84 85 after Vince Sr had passed and Lou Albano was still drinking <laughs> and you just Vinny Jr Vinny Jr you know he was getting a double header Albano <laughs> got double heat and you knew McMahon hated it you just knew it every time he called him Vinny Jr I think he actually did it before that when McMahon Sr was alive that was probably his only protection he says that why can't I say that Vinny Jr it's like calling him douchebag von fuckface are you getting it both as <laughs> Okay, I did. I don't remember who this was for, and hopefully they're not listening. But I did one <laughs> of those private signings one time at one of the Legends of the Ring convention. And it was like 3,000 eight by tens. And I did this over a couple of nights in the hotel room while I was shooting video. And then we did the convention or whatever. I barely finished these things. And I was so tired and so slappy going in the downhill stretch of the thing. When I turn the back end of the guy, there's out of those 3,008 by 10s, 2,999 of them are signed Jim Cornette. But one 8 by 10 in the middle of the stack somewhere is signed Douchebag Von Fuckface. (laughs) (laughs) And I just, I tickled myself to no end, thinking who's going to be the one to get the autographed douchebag von fuckface photo it could be valuable now now maybe i've made it a collector's item famous wrestling juniors yes angelo mosca jr there you go that proves my point again more often than not it was an anchor around the poor man's neck so the biggest star i guess would be bruno where there was a junior but and that was um just right when David had first broke in, right? And didn't last very long at all. It was when he first broke in, but it was whenever he went to a territory in those first few years, that was what he was, when he went to Georgia, when he went to mid South briefly, when he went to different places, he was Bruno San Martino jr. Oh boy. And then when Bruno and Vince jr. Vinny jr. (laughs) uh, Reconciled in the summer of 84, Bruno became the commentator on championship wrestling and David San Martino came into the company, not as Bruno San Martino Jr., obviously, which would have been the real kiss of death. Oh, my God. To, to go into the Northeast as Bruno Jr. Now, he probably found out what poor Frank Sinatra Jr. felt like. I think Sinatra Jr. had a better he probably career. did better. Yeah. yeah, he had a better career and was more respected. And then no disrespect to David San Martino, but in, in wrestling, he's not really thought of highly. David wasn't even worth kidnapping. 
Well, that's not nice. That's see, that's not very no, nice. No, I'm just kidding. That's not nice. just joshing. Do you think it was a real kidnapping or was a uh, Sinatra Jr. behind the whole thing to get the money? Well, you never know about these things, but you know Frank could have pissed off the wrong. Uh, the wrong guy and, you know, the made man. You never know. I love the story of Sinatra and Joe DiMaggio trying to catch Marilyn Monroe with another man. And they break down the door to the wrong house. Imagine <laughs> you're in that house and here's Joe DiMaggio and Frank Sinatra who <laughs> break into your front door. And I think that was the end of Frank Sinatra's friendship with Joe DiMaggio, actually. <laughs> and he turned around and said, where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? He thought that song was an insult to him when it first came out. He didn't understand why they were saying it. Why are they saying, where did I go? I'm right here. And I'm right where I always have been. With Mr. I Coffee. It, I thought he was upset over the uh, the adultery, the theme. I wish You know, was. Joe DiMaggio was a very uh, straight-laced fellow. Well, that's at least what he wanted people to think. He didn't want people to think of the Yankee Clipper fucking multiple hookers at once or anything. That doesn't yeah, do anything do for his brand. Now, wait a minute. How do you know? How He didn't fuck multiple hookers at once. No. He only fucked one at a time. The other ones were standing around watching. We presume. That's like that guy I told you. His excuse, he said he wasn't drinking and driving. He drank, and then he drove. All right. Wrestling juniors. Famous wrestling juniors. <laughs> I didn't mean for it to be a big whole long thing. I just, well, here's something. How did we get started there? How did we get started? Who there? was the junior? Shivani Jr. Shivani, Tony Shivani Jr. I smell money. I smell money. I smell something else, but let's move on with the show. 